Manus versus Open Manus. What's the difference? Which one is better? How much better is Manus versus Open Manus? By the way, if you're not familiar with this, basically, Manus can create amazing animations like this. You can deploy them to subdomains. You can create games like you can see. You've also got, for example, e-commerce stores that have been automated and built really quickly with Open, with, sorry, Manus. And this is kind of like an autonomous AI agent that can build websites, automate tasks for you. It can build anything you want. You've got all these crazy SaaS dashboards that you can create. And you do this all just by creating like one prompt inside the chat, right? So for example, if we go to my chats inside Manus here, you see all this stuff that we've created previously. So for example, this is a local SEO directory that I created. Looks pretty nice. Content filled out on every single page. And we're ready to go on that. What we've also got, for example, is we have these reports that you can build. It can even do reports on like trends in the market, etc. So this actually went off onto the internet. And as an AI agent, you just started analyzing like Google trends in the stock market, found some cor correlations there and that sort of thing as well. Additionally, it even planned out like a comprehensive 30 day trip. And we built like a medieval game. Like you can see right here using this process. Some people bought, built some really crazy stuff. For example, like style games. I even built this website using Manus as well. So let's compare it side by side versus Open Manus. If you're not sure how to set up Open Manus, it's inside the AI Profit Boardroom. Just go to the SP section and you get access right here. Or you can just go to the GitHub available at Open Manus and just follow the instructions here. It is a little bit technical, but you get the point. And I've got this already set up, pre set up inside the chat right here. So we have Manus ready to go. Just need to copy the instructions. So let me grab the python.ampy over here. We'll plug that in. We'll get that running. All right. And then once you've set up Open Manus, which is kind of like a localized, open sourced version of Manus from what I understand, but it doesn't have such a nice UI, then we can start giving it prompts. Okay. Now, the main thing that I would say with Manus is like right now, it seems to be overwhelmed. And what I mean by that is like, there's supposed to be something crazy, like 2 million people on the waiting list. I saw that on Twitter this morning. I don't know if it's true or not. It's not confirmed officially, but that is pretty wild if it's true. And that means as well that this is in beta. And because that's in beta, for example, if I try and start a new chat inside Manus, it's only going to let me do like one task a day. All right. So if we ask it, it looks like it's, yeah, there we go. So it says you have reached the maximum daily usage limit during the beta testing period. So it's very limited, which is one of the biggest issues with Manus, right? I absolutely love the tool, love that it's autonomous, love that it can do whatever it wants. But if you can only use it once a day, it's pretty limited. Whereas for example, Open Manus, because it's running on your APIs, for example, this has ChatGPT 4.0's API plugged in, then at least it can actually do stuff even if it can't do it at the same level. So for example, if we say, all right, research a three day trip to New York. We'll zoom in there and then we'll hit enter. Hopefully this works. So you can see it's actually just running the task. So by default, actually yeah, it wins technically because it actually does the job that we need it to. The only thing that I tend to find is it's pretty poor when it comes to formatting it, right? And so you can see here, it can like Google stuff. It can fix stuff out, etc. And if we go to Visual Studio Code, where we have this set up, you can see previous stuff that I built, right? So for example, we've got like a, a day one Tokyo itinerary that I built, plugged in right there. And this is the output from Open Manus, right? So the good thing about this as well is it's stored locally, so you can always come back to it whenever you want. It's pretty easy to set up once you've already installed like the everything else that's required. Once it's done as well, it will give you the outputs here. For example, we've got the Tokyo itinerary plan that I created previously. We also, for example, have a SEO cost calculator that we've built. Let me see if I can test this for you now. And then we also have, what else? We've got SEO cost calculator right here. And so it's pretty easy and simple to set up and then we can come back to the outputs here. However, if we have a look at the outputs, it's really basic. So let me show you an example. So. If we go over to Manus, one of the main demos that it has, if we scroll down here, is a trip to Japan in April. And if you look at the outputs from Open Manus versus Manus, Manus just goes into way more detail, right? So you can see here, I was searching a lot more websites. 
it's got a really nice UI and it's scanning through the whole internet. I will show you how to set up Open Manus as well at the end of this video if you're struggling to set up. But you can see here that the outputs are just much more in depth, right? It goes into way more detail, it's way more comprehensive. Whereas, for example, inside Manus, it's really basic. Like it will do a few searches, it will create the itinerary, but we don't really get much of an output. And then if we go to the final output from Manus as well, over here, if we scroll down, it's nicely formatted, but also is much more in depth. So if we compare, for example, this plan, which is, let's have a look here. This is 552 words. Whereas if we go over to the itinerary from Open Manus, it's really basic. Honestly, you're probably going to get a better output directly from ChatGPT than using this process right here. So it's very limited. That's the only thing, like you get a feel for what Manus can do, but you don't get the same power or the same functionality. And the other thing as well is like on, Op on Manus itself directly, you can actually host subdomains, right? So you can create something and then host it as a subdomain. Here's an example of an SEO cost calculator we built using Open Manus as well. Super basic stuff. So it can browse the internet. It is like an AI autonomous agent. But the biggest issue here is that it's just not that great at going off and doing stuff. Manus gives us tons of detail, whereas Open Manus is very limited. Now, this could change if you plug in a different API key directly into Manus, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. But honestly, it's just, it's not that impressive, right? I think I've actually got better results with other AI agents, like for example, this one, I think it's Convergence. Convergence is pretty decent as well. So if we go into Google and we type in Convergence AI, this is probably a better alternative to Open Manus. The only thing is it's not installed locally, but it is like a Manus assistant that will just go off and do stuff, right? So if we log in here, I'll do that in the background and we'll get that set up. This is what Convergence looks like. It's like what ChatGPT operator promised to do. And if we, for example, click on Stock Trader, run that task right here, we'll see what it comes back with. And then it'll say, okay, could you specify which stock price you want? So I'm just gonna put Tesla, for example, there. And we'll see what it comes back with. And I would say if you want something with good UI that's quite autonomous, then probably Convergence AI is better. Bear in mind, I didn't pay for this, right? This is a free tool. You can get free access to it. I think it does have limits, so it's freemium. But honestly, if you compare the output of Convergence AI versus the output of Open Manus, I think Convergence AI is 10 times better. You can also automate the task as well. So if you click on this, you can choose like your start time, kind of like chat GPT tasks, set a schedule and then go from there. And also you get a preview so you can see the proxies view exactly what it looks like, which is really cool as well. Is that better than open Manus? I would absolutely say so. The other thing as well is on Manus, if you go back to it, you can actually, let's have a look here, what we got. So we can actually deploy websites. So if we scroll down, Let's scroll down to the deployment section right here. Yeah, you can see, for example, you can deploy to a subdomain, which you can't do with the localized version of Open Manus. Now, if you want to set up Open Manus, so let me show you exactly how that works step by step. Pretty simple stuff. So we can go to the GitHub, or in fact, what I'm going to do is just follow the instructions inside the AI Profit Boardroom. And essentially, we have to set up a new Conda environment. So let me do that plug this in so then you're going to press yes so just y it's going to start setting it up like you can see it is a little bit technical so if you've never used terminal before you're probably going to look at this and feel like an fbi hacker or something like it, it feels a little bit confusing when you're first checking out a terminal for someone who doesn't have a coding background now once we've set that up we can just copy these instructions like then we're going to pip install that bad boy and then from there what you also need to do is you need to set up a config file for your API keys, right? So for example, what you're going to do is you're going to plug in the configuration. You can use Claude. I think honestly, you're going to get better results with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. You can also put in, for example, all these optional APIs right here. And then if we shut that down by pressing control and X, then we can use the Python command right here, run that, and we should be good to go on that. All right, let me just double check this. Yeah, 
Obviously, you need to put in an API key, but yeah, that's pretty much how it goes step by step. And then once you've got that running locally, you can just ask it any prompts as long as you've got your, your main API key plugged in there. And then also what you can do is you can open that up in Visual Studio Code, like you can see, and you can see all the outputs in green. All right, so if we look at this folder right here, we have current events, the Tokyo itinerary, the SEO cost calculator, trip plan, attractions, etc. To be fair, that seven day trip plan is not bad, but it's just not that comprehensive. And then we have the SEO cost calculator app that we built in Python. So essentially that's how you can do it step by step. Honestly, as well, like I would say if you're coding out a website or something like that, if you had a choice between open manners and other tools, I'm probably going to use something like windsurf, right? Windsurf is super powerful for building out websites and also it can connect to the internet. It's kind of like an autonomous coding agent. The only problem with Windsurf as well is like, it does require a lot more back and forth, right? If you tell Madness to do something or you tell Open Madness to do something, it just goes off and does it. Whereas if you, for example, you ask the AI to do something, it's usually going to go back and forth a little bit right here. So I'm just going to say run this terminal command. And then I can show you some outputs. But essentially, if we open up a new window here, or we can even open up like an AI automation folder. So let's open up a new window. Then we'll set up open folder, new folder. We'll call this snake test. Open that up. Then we've got some options right here. But the thing is as well, like the outputs from Claude from Windsurf are just nowhere near as powerful from what I've seen versus using something like Manus. So if we wanted to create, let's have a look here. What we got here. All right. So if we use the same prompt inside Windsurf, we'll plug that into here. And bear in mind the output of this with one single prompt. So there's no prompting from the user. It's just one single prompt up here. The output from this is something really impressive. If we ask Windsurf to do the same thing, it's going to take a lot longer. And I don't think the output is going to be that great either. But we'll wait for that to load and see what we come back with. The other thing you could do, yeah, I haven't tested it, but you could probably plug in on Open Manners. So you could plug in the Claw 3.7 Sonnet API, and that would help a lot too. That's another option. What you can also do is you could use something like Bold.new. That's another alternative, right? But again, these are more like coding tools. They're not really like fully autonomous agents, right? So for example, if it's a research task, planning a trip, or for example, even like sending emails and stuff like that, but you could get managed to do if you gave it the login details or like posting tweets and that sort of thing. You can't do that inside Bolt, right? So Bolt.new is great for coding a project. And also quite often Bolt is very buggy. I'll show you an example I was trying to build yesterday. So I asked Bolt to create this AI SEO content creator. And I wanted to test, has it updated and improved since I last started using it, right? So I asked it to create an SEO content writer. And it's really good. Bolt is great for like simple stuff, but it's not great for like complex stuff, like where you have to put in your own API key. So for example, if we wait for this to load, it's going to start installing it right here. The biggest problem that I had, it doesn't even seem to be working on there. Yeah. The biggest problem I had was like, it would constantly come up with these problems right here. So let's try and run this right here. You see how you can't just come back to the project. And then it just constantly has these problems. And I was just clicking through the chat for 20 minutes last night going, solve the problem, solve the problem. So bolt.news is definitely not perfect. It can create like really basic stuff. But let's see how we got on with the interactive moon example. So it says, it's creating the project, building it out. Let's see what we got in the preview. Yeah, so that's not working, is it? Let's try another one. We'll test this one. So this was creating a Julian Goldie website, which I think it did okay on, but it's nowhere near as good as Manus. So let's wait for that to load. Yeah, so here's an example, right? And that image is interesting to say the least. It's definitely not me. It's created a really basic website, but it's not that impressive. Whereas for example, if we go over to the AI Profit Boardroom and then we'll find that page that we're talking about, where is it now? Yeah, the website, this is what Manus built. And that is 10 times better than what we got previously from Bolt.new, right? This is what Bolt.new did. 
and this is what Manus did with the same prompt in. So you get the point, like these one, these AI coding tools, like for example, Bolt, for example, Lovable, Visual Studio Code, etc. They're powerful, but they're not as good as this. And Manus might be a modified version of Claude. It might be like a wrapper, but it gives you better outputs than Claude. I've done another video on Manus versus Claude, so I'm not going to do that today, but you get the point. So that makes, you know, some of the things that we're talking about here today make sense. So thanks so much for watching. You now know which one is better. Manus is better by a long way, but the only problem is you can only do one prompt. I'm on the beta testing. I can only do one prompt per day before it runs out of credits. So if I had a choice, honestly, I'd probably go with Convergence AI out of everything. Open Manus is like very basic. You could use a Claude API to get better outputs, but I just don't think it's anywhere near up to par when it comes to, say, comparing it versus Convergence AI or against Manus. That's my that's what I would say. Now, if you want to get access to all of my best automations with AI, for example, like email, social media, video automation, AI agents, web scraping, AI SEO automation, and all of my best SAPs, which get updated daily. So all the latest cutting edge techniques get put inside here. Feel free to get that inside the AI Profit Boardroom link in the comments description. It also comes with weekly Q&A calls. So you can jump on the weekly Q&A calls, ask any questions you have. And additionally, inside the community, you can ask questions and then, you know, you can get comments and help as you go along, right? So if you ever get stuck with AI, which, you know, 99% of people do tend to get stuck with it, then you can post inside the community and ask any questions that you have. And additionally, if you miss the Q and A's, then you can watch them back, right? So if you can't make one of the Q and A's, just jump on the Q and A call recordings, ask anything that you want to. And if you want to get a free SEO strategy session, feel free to get that link in the comments in the description. And one-to-one -one on this free SEO strategy session, we'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 visits this month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on autopilot. On this free link building acceleration session, you're going to get a free SEO domination plan, custom tailored to your business to get more lead sales and profits. You'll discover the secrets of SEO link building, answer any questions you have one-to-one, -one, and you'll also learn how to 10x SEO traffic based on what's working for us and our happy clients like you can see right here. If you want to get into the school community, click on the link in the comments description to the AI Profit Boardroom, or you can just go to aiprofitboardroom.com and get access right there. Appreciate you watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.